Hi, my name is Reverend Dale Brown, and I serve as the senior pastor of Community Church at Ocean Pines. I am excited to be with you today for lots of reasons. One is that I have missed doing this broad, virtual broadcast for a few weeks. Somehow, just before Easter, I contracted very acute, very bad bronchitis. And for me, it's very difficult to fight diseases and things because I have a compromised immune system. So I was in the house for a little around right at three weeks. And I would sneak out on occasion to go get something for lunch or to go to Walmart and get one of the five prescriptions that I was supposed to get. Um, but mainly I sat there and looked out the window and watched the bird feeder until the bird feeder became empty. And then I watched TV, which was worse than the bird feeder. But at any rate, it's really good to be back and to talk about our faith in God, the love that God has for all of us, and the wonderful people and the wonderful gathering of people that is Community Church at Ocean Pines. Thank you for joining us. Your virtual presence is very, very important. And if I, as a pastor, can do anything for you to help you in any way, please know that I'm more than happy to do so. And you can contact me at 302-381-8834 or dale.brown.com. 1963 at gmail.com. Thank you for watching and listening. I'm also excited because it's baseball season. And yesterday I got to go with my son to see the Orioles beat the Red Sox. And when the Orioles win, it always makes for a better day. And finally, I'm glad to be with you because I am so thrilled to be the pastor of this wonderful church. When I was sick, I got all kinds of cards and emails and text and food, and they took care of their pastor in wonderful ways. And they do this for one another. And it's just a loving church. And if you're looking for a church to attend, if you want to be in a physical presence, um, please know that uh, this community church at Ocean Pines is more than welcome and more than wanting to receive you. I do want to say one other thing. On Friday night of this week, uh, if you're watching this on, on before Friday is over, uh, my plan is to attend uh, at 7.30 the service of Holocaust Remembrance at Temple Bat Yam. They are dear friends of ours, uh, our two congregation, houses of worship, do a lot of things together, and I would encourage you to, to go and attend that. It's so important in this day and era when uh, there's so much violence and pain and hurt in the world that we not forget the suffering and pain of those six million persons during the Second World War, most of whom were Jewish. Let us pray together. Loving Shepherd, you know our names. You care for us. When we face darkness and death, walk beside us. When we hunger for your love, fill us with your presence. When we are fearful, feed us at your table. May we dwell in the house of goodness and mercy all the days of our lives. Amen. And also join me today as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let me read to you today, today's scripture reading. It's one that's very familiar to you, and you might already have it memorized. It is the 23rd 
psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Dear friends, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> when I was growing up in Pocomoke City, Maryland, I attended confirmation. Now I have the great privilege of teaching confirmation, and it is, it's just a real thrill to get the chance to do so. I love interacting with the kids, but when I was in confirmation a long time ago, Austin's laughing as he tapes this because it's longer and longer every year. I had to memorize the 23rd Psalm to be able to join the church. I had to memorize the Lord's Prayer. I had to memorize the Apostles' Creed, the Ten Commandments, and the 23rd Psalm. Now, I don't require my kids to do all that. Maybe I'm too easy or maybe the Reverend Tom Wall was too hard. I, I don't remember. But at any rate, I am. I remember confirmation, and I remember memorizing this psalm. Even now, I might get a word or two off, but I memorized it in King James English, in the King James Version of the Bible, and for most of it, I come pretty close. And I've also used this psalm almost every day of my professional career. As a pastor, I include it in most every funeral service. The only ones that I don't include it in are those where they say, hey, um, we'd rather use something different. And that's the family's choice, certainly. And if I go to the hospital, I read the 23rd Psalm quite often. I use it in personal prayer. I use it in, in terms of, you know, just as a way maybe of praying to open a meeting on occasion. There are many, many ways in the life of the church and the life of faith that we use the 23rd Psalm. I think one of the reasons that the 23rd Psalm is so loved is because it presents us with an image of God as a God of comfort and protection. Over and over again, it says that God protects and keeps us, keeps us safe, keeps us from harm, and provides for us. And this is an image of God that offers us comfort and hope, and we feel safe and secure in, in who we are and in who God is. So let's take a look at some of the words of this psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, some of the newer translations of the Bible are actually translating this, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. So often we focus on the things we don't have and maybe want, or at least strongly think we need. But I think at the very beginning of this psalm, where God is described as a shepherd who is protective and caring for the sheep, we are reminded that in God we have all that we need. Sometimes we often have things that we want, but really think we need. I have a pair of walking shoes. Now, I, I exercise, I go to the gym, I do all these things to try to be healthy, and I had gotten these walking shoes 
a, a while back because I had planned to walk. Now, I have a lot of allergies from nature and things, so somehow I never quite got around to walking. But I knew deep in my heart I needed those nice walking shoes. Truth is, I never used them. They're as brand new as if you went to the store and bought them yourself today. So I'm going to be giving those walking shoes away. I really didn't need them. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I, I lack for nothing. The things that we want are often so cultured and driven uh, by society. What we really need is a deeper faith and commitment to God. And it's amazing to me how when we commit to God, our wish or want list decreases because the focus comes off ourselves and goes on to God and others and how much more generous we can be, hopefully, in our sharing. It says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Now, these two comments are, are allusions back to God being a shepherd. Green pastures are where sheep can eat. And, and I was once told, because when I served at Union United Methodist Church in Bridgeville, and I don't know whether it's true or not, that sheep will not drink from moving water. They need still, calm water. And the rod can be used in ways that sometimes might sting or or really kind of direct the sheep, but, and the staff is a gentle way to recall the sheep and to bring the sheep back to safety. I always wondered about verse five. <clears throat> you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. We don't normally eat with our enemies. And one writer suggested that it was the fact that we had a table in the pr their presence and they would look at us and be jealous. I I'm not sure. All I know is that, again, it's an indication of God's protection. You anoint my head with oil. Oil in the ancient world was used for healing. God heals us in the same way that he restores our soul. soul. Goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. God has good in store for us. God intends good for us. And in this Easter season... We know that mercy comes through the life and death of Jesus Christ. And so we're thankful for being and receiving mercy. We will dwell in the house of the Lord our whole life long. Now, some of the other translations translate that we will, shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The actual better translation, according to the ancient Hebrew, is in the house of the Lord our whole lives, our whole life long. Meaning that as we're living, we're going to live in a way that we're in constant worship, constant contact with God. As we think about the 23rd Psalm and the comforting image it portrays of God, let me ask you to consider just two or three things. Maybe when you wake up, and this is number one, or when you go to bed, or maybe at lunch, have a little card there if you haven't memorized it. And pray or read prayerfully the words of the 23rd Psalm every day. I, I do try to do that. I don't always make it. Sometimes I get going. But I do at some point in the day try to refer to this Psalm and to Psalm 46 and to Psalm 121. I have a great love for the Psalms, so it's never a problem for me to do that. But pray this Psalm at some point during the day, and as even as you pray the Lord's Prayer at some point during the day. Secondly, if you are, are able, and don't say you don't memorize well, but try to memorize it. Whatever you get in of this is going to be beneficial to you. And the third thing is just live in the presence of a loving God. A God who offers us comfort and kindness. God is not angry with us. God is not out to get us. Those persons, those preachers who portray God as wanting to attack or uh, do us in, nah. God loves us. God loves you. And no, 
I don't want to sound like Mr. Rogers. God loves you just the way you are. And God offers you the opportunity to become even better. Amen. So let us pray our closing prayer together. Nourished by the shepherd's abundant love, go forth to walk in the paths of righteousness. Love one another in truth and action. May God's abundant blessings abide in you forever. Amen. Have a great day and thank you for watching and listening.